Welcome to the fifth installment in our peer-to-peer -peer networking series. Today we'll be looking at using PNRP and Windows Communication Foundation to establish a direct connection between peers across our network. So what do we mean when we're talking about establishing a direct connection? What we're really talking about is using WCF to directly connect one peer to another peer. It's really all about one-to-one -one communication. This is not, at this point, intended for communicating with a large number of peers. So to be really clear, what we're talking about is, let's say we have two people out on the internet and they want to play tic-tac-toe. So Bob goes out and registers a peer name with PNRP, which includes, as part of that registration, his IP address and a port number. Alice also wants to play tic-tac-toe, so she can go ahead and register as well. Her IP address and port number are published into the cloud. And then Bob could look for other people, other peers that want to play tic-tac-toe, using that registration information, pull out Alice's IP address and port number, and then using WCF be able to connect directly up to Alice and be able to start a game of tic-tac-toe. So that's really what we're talking about. The basics of using WCF in this scenario are that your peer application can act as either a host for a set of WCF services, so kind of like having a dynamic server that comes and goes in the cloud. It can be the client consuming those services, or typically in a peer-to-peer -peer scenario, your peer application will be acting as both a host and a client for your application. Typically, we're going to be using TCP or maybe HTTP bindings because you have the IP address and have the port, you can certainly extend and leverage the WCF infrastructure to come up with any kind of you know connection that you may want to be able to get to work, provided the fact that you understand you have an IP address and a port number. Uh, what we'll be doing in our examples is using the PNRP peer host name that we've explored in earlier installments of this series to use that as a, a quote-unquote DNS name, a faux DNS name, to connect between peers. You can certainly use duplex communication as well. For simplicity purposes and the demonstrations I'll be doing, we'll be doing this in kind of a client and server sort of scenario just because I don't want to get into the complexities of WCF. You can kind of explore those on your own. But in most peer-to-peer -peer scenarios, you probably would be doing this via duplex communication. And in future installments, we'll actually probably do some of that as well. So the steps to connect are pretty straightforward. You set up a WCF service either on your machine or some other peer will be setting up a WCF service. Again, this could be the host, the client, or both. You go ahead and register your PNRP peer name. You resolve other peers, and then using the peer endpoint information that you get, you pass that into WCF and connect. Now, one thing to be aware of is that when you are setting up your WCF service and you're creating the host side of that equation, what we typically need to do is configure our client firewall, Windows firewall, for example, to accept inbound communication. Most firewalls, certainly Windows firewall, prevent what's called edge transversal, which basically means that I have this service running, and yes, I've opened up ports so my service can communicate out. But if someone tries to come in and connect to me, and I haven't talked to them first, most firewalls will deny that communication unless you specifically set that up. And we'll show you how you do that on the client um, using the control panel, but you may also want to solve that problem at install time for your application and set up some firewall rules as part of that installation. So let's go ahead and do a demo of setting up the host. Let's dive in and look at our WCF host application. So I have a project called WCF Direct Host. I'm not going to focus on implementing the WCF service. There's lots of tutorials on the internet on how to do that, but this is the service contract. I basically have three methods that I want to expose from my hosted service. A enter method, so when I log on, I pass some agent info, uh, sending those images back and forth from the agent to the host, and then a kind of log off or a leave method to say that the, you know, the particular agent is left. Um, there's some other stuff here that's application specific, but you can figure, you learn how to do WCF application development if, uh, with tons of available internet resources if you're not familiar. But that's kind of the service, the collection of operations I want to expose on the internet. Uh, what I've done is I've created a class called Peer Registration Service to give me a little bit of separation of concerns, and its sole purpose is to wrap uh, the peer-to-peer -peer namespace. The two important things that we'll be using is a start function, or start method. What it does is it takes takes in a peer classifier and a port, and it basically sets up my peer 
uh, registration for me. So it creates a peer name. Uh, using my peer classifier, it will be an unsecured peer name. And then it goes ahead and creates a registration using the peer name, the port, and registers into the global PNRP cloud. And then I go ahead and start that registration to actually log me, quote unquote, log me into the PNRP infrastructure. The other important thing to note is I have this property called peer URI. All it really does is returns that peer host name that we've looked at in previous screencasts. So both of these uh, methods and properties here are just doing the exact same thing we've done in, in previous screencasts. So this is kind of my faux DNS name that's being created for me by the PNRP infrastructure. So let's go ahead and look at then how we actually would use that to set up our WCF hosting environment and make that service accessible via that PNRP host name. So inside of my Intel service host, I have a method called open. And what I do is I pass in the service I want to host, a peer classifier and a port, and you could probably tweak this and make it a little different, a little better. Again, I'm just kind of, you know, slinging code uh, for uh, trying to get these apps done for demonstration purposes. But I'm going to go ahead and call that peer registration class and say I need to start. I need to register into the peer-to-peer -peer infrastructure. So we're going to pass in a peer classifier and a port. Now the question may be, where did that port come from? Uh, real quickly, let me jump over here and open my service presenter. And I'm going to go down to a method uh, function, sorry, called find free port. And what it does is it uses the system.net namespace and goes in and creates an IP endpoint that's binding to any of my available IP addresses. And then it goes and says I want to create a socket. That socket should be on the IP4 network. And because I can do IP6 tunneling through IP4, it makes sense to kind of grab an IP4 endpoint. And I ask that socket to bind to an available endpoint. And what happens is, is then the system.net infrastructure will automatically find a free port for me to bind that socket to. And then I can grab that and just return that from this function. So I'm kind of playing a little bit of a game here, kind of binding a port and getting rid of it but it tells me a free port that I can use. Again, you could statically define that if you want. So that goes ahead and registers me into the peer-to-peer -peer namespace. So what I next need is a URI that my WCF infrastructure can attach to and listen to for incoming requests for that service that I want to host. So we're going to use TCP for this particular service. So I'm going to create a new URI and we'll just use a string formatter here and we really need to pass in a couple of key pieces of information. As I said, this will be a TCP based service and what I need to pass in is a host name. In uh, most WCF services, this would be the DNS name of the server that you're running your WCF service on. Well, we don't have that truly because we're, you know, uh, just a client laptop machine coming and going. I need the port, and then we're going to listen on an endpoint called Intel Service. So what I pass in for the DNS host name is I go into peer-to-peer -peer registration, and I grab my faux DNS name from my peer-to-peer -peer environment. So this is that PNRP host name being passed back from in my peer host name, and then the port. And so that sets up the URI then that can be used by WCF. So I'm going to go in and um, go ahead and create a new service host that actually will host my WCF service. I'm going to pass in the service that I want to be hosted that was passed into me in the uh, method call, and then I'm going to say, hey, and you're going to listen on this new URI that I created. Now the next couple steps here that I'm going to do, you could also uh, kind of set this up using WCF config files. I'm just going to do it in code here to kind of explain exactly what's going on for folks who may not necessarily you know, understand WCF config files and all that kind of thing. What I need to do is, now that I have my service host set up to actually host the service, is I need to give it the infrastructure to actually bind the host to the actual endpoints that we need to listen to. So I'm going to create a net TCP binding. And we'll go ahead and just create a new one of those. And, and I need to tell it what its security mode is going to be. And we'll just say that in this case it's none, but I could use transport or message security um, along with this if I wanted to give myself a little more secure implementation. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell my service host, okay, let's add that as a service endpoint now. And so what you're going to do is you're going to end up hosting something of iIntel service and then you're going to do that at that TCP binding. And there's no additional URI information I need to pass in because I kind of configured the entire URI um, up there when I set up that TCP URI. And that's all there is to it. When I run the application now and I click that Start button, this configures up WCF and starts to host that service for me dynamically on a PNRP-based endpoint.